You're watching, yes, the Yankees Entertainment and Sports Network. Another beautiful summer evening in Cleveland, Ohio, where tonight the Yankees hoping they can pitch like Bob Feller and hit like Larry Doby. As the Yes Network presents New York Yankees baseball. Tonight, the middle game of a three-game set between the Cleveland Indians and the New York Yankees. Hey everybody, Ryan Rucco alongside David Cohn. Happy to be with you on this Wednesday evening here on Yes. You've already been with us this Wednesday. It just <laughs> was the early morning thanks to a 16-inning contest last night and one that the Yankees came out on the wrong end of. A 5-4 loss. Yankees now 2-7 and seven in extra inning games this season. Their top five hitters really struggled. One for their... 28 yesterday in the loss. Luis Severino goes six innings, allows just two runs in his second career start, acquitted himself nicely. And Andrew Miller blowing his first save of the season. David, as we move to the next day following that loss, what still lingers from last night's game? Well, I think the continuing struggling at the top of the order, without a doubt, over the sweep against the Blue Jays back in the Bronx, continued last night through 16 innings. Uh, the, the part of the order that really carried the Yankees was so dynamic for the better part of this year and led them to second in the league and run scored uh, has really failed them over the last five games. They need to turn that around. Ellsbury needs to step up. He needs to be a firecracker at the top of that order. Until that happens, you're going to continue to see the Yankees struggle. And he actually gets today off. More on that from Meredith Morakovitz coming up. Why don't you take a look at today's pitching matchup brought to you by People's United Bank N.A. See what know-how can do for you. Danny Salazar, another gas thrower on the for Cleveland and CC Sabathia back in his old stomping grounds for the first time pitching since 2012 in this ballpark and David coming off maybe his best start of the season. Yes and the encouraging part was the velocity spike. We've talked about it. Sabathia showed flashes of this in spring training which led me to predict he was going to have a big year but he finally came around that 94 mile an hour fastball made everything else better. The change up the slider was his best of the year blowing away David Ortiz and showing that kind of emotion. Sabathia's got a chance to redeem himself and all will be forgiven about the first half. Well the Yankees trying to redeem themselves from a 16 inning marathon last night. Why isn't Jacoby Ellsbury playing and what other roster moves followed that marathon? We find out from Meredith Morakovitz next on Yes.
Rockovitz. The Yankees will try to right the ship this evening after losing four straight games. They were outscored 15 to 5 during that span. Now, Jacoby Ellsbury has the evening off. Joe Girardi hoping that'll help him get back on track offensively. He has really struggled mightily as of late, just hitting 174 in his last 30 games, not to mention he is hitless in his last 19 at bats. He's just been struggling, and I thought I would just give him a day and let him do some work um, and see if we can get him back on track. I mean, he's uh, had a rough go of it here lately, and um, we really need to get him going. So I thought maybe you just give him a day and let him do some work and see if you know they can iron some things out. There are also a couple roster moves made this evening. Nick Goody as well as Chris Capuano have been added to the roster. Meanwhile, Garrett Jones designated for assignment for the second time this season. Also, Brandon Pinder optioned to Triple A Scranton Wilkesbury. Plenty more to come here on the S yes Network. Ryan Rucco and David Cohn coming your way next with lineups, first pitch baseball right here on Yes. summer offers visit CadillacTriState.com. By Advanced Radiation Centers of New York. When it comes to fighting cancer, precision is everything. Call 844-2-RADIATION-DOC. And by Honda, great deals are on at the Honda Summer Clearance Event. What a beautiful Wednesday evening for baseball in Cleveland. Almost an autumnal feel. Here at Progressive Field, Yankees and Indians getting ready for the middle game of their three-game set before the Yankees will head to Toronto for a vital three-game series against the Blue Jays. Let's take a look at tonight's Yankees starting lineup presented by Lexus. Greg Gardner leading off with no Jacoby Ellsbury in the lineup tonight. That means Chase Headley gets the two-hole. Alex Rodriguez will bat third. Mark Teixeira cleaning up. It's fourth. Brian McCann in the five spot. Carlos Beltran coming off a home run last night, bat six. Didi Gregorius, red hot, bat seven. Chris Young gets the start against the righty, batting eighth. And Stephen Drew will round out the Yankee lineup as they go up against another talented, hard throwing righty in Danny Salazar, David. Indeed, uh, really having a breakout year so far. Across the board, excellent numbers. He strikes out a lot of guys, and he doesn't walk a lot of guys. Only 35 and 125 in the third innings. And let's go ahead and give you the pitcher scouting report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. And as Ryan just said, he's another Indian power arm. Their rotation is full of them, and we, we we're not even going to see Corey Kluber this round. 
He averages about 95 miles an hour on that fastball, one of the best ones in the league. Excellent split change. A lot of those strikeouts come from that split change, kind of a, similar to Chasen Shreves from the Yankees. Uh, it's his go-to pitch, according to fan graphs. It's his most valuable pitch, and look for that one. It's got splitter-like action, and this is his first time facing the Yankees. So, you know, welcome to the American League East and facing the Yankees. It's uh, For his benefit, it's at home, but this kid is the second fastest Indian to, to register 300 strikeouts in his career to Herb Score. So that's saying something. Herb Score did it in 40 appearances, and Salazar's done it in 50. Pretty good company as we take a look at the defense behind Salazar, presented by Geico. It's Mike Avilas who will get the start in left, Abraham Almonte in center, Jerry Sands getting the start in right, Urshela, Lindor, Ramirez, the talented infield with Johnson at first, and Perez, Roberto Perez, does the catching tonight after Jan Gomes caught all 16 innings last night. Joe Girardi said he expects heavy legs in today's game. That's unavoidable for both teams when you're coming off of a 16-inning game. It's not the way you wanted to start out a stretch of 16 games in 16 days with 16 innings. Yeah. So Brett Gardner will lead off against Salazar with Ellsbury getting the day off. And strike one to Gardner. We heard Meredith explaining in the open why Ellsbury getting the day. Joe Girardi just giving him a day to work on some things. Says, look, we need to get him going. Offensively, he's so important to our team. Sometimes you spend a day working with your hitting coaches, reviewing film, and it may be something so slight that you finally do pick up on because of the time you spend on. Yeah, and sometimes it's just good to get an emotional break from the grind. Well, Ellsbury was slumping coming into last night, and then when you, you go hitless in a 16 inning game, it just magnifies everything. A 1 2 to Gardner. Slap down the left field line, foul. Gardner's had his own struggles, hitting just 183 over his last 20 games. Let's take a look at tonight's Cold Art Facts, brought to you by Clean Crisp Coors Light. And you see in the month of August, the top two in the Yankee order have just really struggled. And Gardner cuts and misses the throw down in time. He is retired, and the struggles continue. Take a look at the game time weather presented by Bigelow T. A beautiful evening. 72 degrees. 58% humidity. Mostly clear. And a great night for baseball with the exclamation point. A little bit autumnal, right? A little hint of fall in the air. Yeah, definitely. You could feel it in Cleveland. A little breeze off the lake. Just dead solid perfect though walking around downtown today in Cleveland. Chase Headley hitting in the two hole. A place he frequently hit while Ellsbury was hurt. Headley with the big two run pinch hit single in the 10th looked like it was going to be a game winner. Did not hold up after Andrew Miller blew his first save of the season. Salazar behind 3-0. and Michael Brantley getting the day off. Probably welcome news for the Yankees. Not terribly sad to see him over there without his game face on. But obviously Terry Francona has seen the numbers on Sabathia and his struggles against right-handed batters and has stacked the lineup with righties. As Headley works a five pitch walk. And Brantley specifically against CC has struggled as well. One for 11 in his career with six strikeouts. Throw that in with the lefty righty splits. And Brantley, last night's hero, three hits including the walk off single, not in the lineup as Alex Rodriguez comes to the plate.
Rodriguez pops that up. Near the stands and into the stands as Johnson gave it a look. 0-1. See, Alex has been very aggressive the last couple of nights. And first pitch, looking for that first fastball. He knows Salazar's got a good one, but he also doesn't want to get down to two strikes because Salazar is a strikeout artist. And that slider-splitter combination, really tough to handle. Salazar fifth in all of baseball in strikeouts per nine innings. Averages 10.27 strikeouts per nine. The leader in that category, Chris Sale at 11 and a half. CC Sabathia waiting his turn. One one. Just off the outside corner, two and one. Joe Girardi was asked if maybe some of the offensive struggles are because of guys like Teixeira, Rodriguez, veterans later in the season. Girardi said sometimes we try and make too much of something. Could just be a few bad games. Rodriguez looked fine at the end of last night when he cracked that line drive to left field. He said Teixeira looked fine when he roped that line drive to first. He searched for those answers, but sometimes the answer is you're just in a rut. Yes, and, and with that being said, Girardi did admit that with the DFA of Garrett Jones, that Brendan Ryan is your backup first baseman, and he doesn't really want to play to share a 16 straight games, as we mentioned in this, this stretch of 16 games in 16 days. The 2-2, two -two, grounded hard towards the middle, backhanded by Ramirez to Lindor for one, on to first in time. What a pretty double play from the talented middle infield of Cleveland. Looked like it was ticketed for center field. Instead, Ramirez on the stab, Lindor on the pick and throw in time to end the top of the first. Leading off, Francisco Lindor will hit second. The two just teaming up on that DP. Chris Johnson moves to third with no Michael Brantley. Carlos Santana, the DH, bats cleanup. Jerry Sands in the five spot. Giovanni Urshela, bat sixth. Abraham Almonte, bat seventh. Roberto Perez, the catcher, hits eighth. And Micah Vilas rounds out the Indian starting lineup. That will go up against former Indian CC Sabathia, David. Yes, in Sabathia, as we said, coming off of probably his best start of the year. But for Sabathia's purposes, I would just forget about those numbers and go from here forward. The Yankees need him right now. He's, he's feeling better about himself after that last outing. I really do believe, Ryan, that he has a chance to redeem himself because the Yankees really need him right now, especially tonight. CC making his first start here at Progressive Field since 2012. And he delivers strike one. Let's go ahead and give you the pitcher scatter report brought to you by your Tri Honda dealers. And homecoming night, yes. It's hard to believe. CC was 20 years old when he broke in with the Indians. He went 106 and 71. 
for a career record and a velocity spike in his last start up to 94 miles an hour. And as, as I just talked about, Ryan, uh, he's got a chance to save his year right now. If he pitches well down the stretch, in, in, including being a stopper in these types of games, then you can forget about that first half and all those struggles and right down helping the Yankees get to postseason. David, you went through that as a veteran towards the end of your career, your end of your Yankee career. Were you able to sort of adopt that mindset going into the 2000 postseason? Yes, you know, it, it was a relief that we were able to make the postseason in spite of how poorly I pitched. But I was desperate to help out any way I, I could, even going to the bullpen towards the end of the year. And that, that ended up leading to a World Series appearance to, to face Mike Piazza that year. But I was lucky to be on the playoff roster. I mean, I was... The performance that year for me was an all-time low. It was a bottoming out. Still got Piazza for the final out of the fifth inning, though, and uh, Denny Nagel's start. You know, comparatively speaking, Sabathia's got much better stuff right now than I had back then in 2000. I, I still think he can help this team down the stretch. And the 2-2. That is looped over Gregorius's head and into left field for a base hit. And Ramirez is on to start things for Cleveland. Take a look at the Yankees defense presented by Geico. Chris Young getting the start in left. Gardner slides to center with no Ellsbury in the lineup. Carlos Beltran in right. The regular infield of Headley, Gregorius, Drew, and Teixeira with Brian McCann catching CC Sebastian. Jose Ramirez done a nice job in this series. Three hits last night, scored the winning run. A hit to lead off this game. And now Francisco Lindor shows bunt and takes ball one. Lindor figures to be the shortstop here for a very long time. In Cleveland, 21 years old. Number nine prospect according to Baseball America before the season. And lays down a nice push bunt there. Teixeira will field it, toss it slowly, and just get it to Drew in time for the out. I wouldn't call that just a straight sacrifice bunt. It looked like Lindor, Lindor had more in mind there. Understanding that Sabathia on the scouting report is not going to get over and cover first. You can see he's busted it out of the box, and this is all on to Shara and Drew. And by a step, Lindor gets a, gets a little bit off of that bunt and it makes to Shara come a little further. He might have had a hit. So now Chris Johnson hitting in the three hole. Looks at strike one, 90 miles an hour from Sabathia. All right-handed batters is what Sabathia will face. Four switch hitters, five straight righties. Righties this year against CC hitting 326. Lefties just 189. Good. Breaking ball, catching the outside corner. That was a key pitch for him. In his last outing with Boston, against Boston rather, he still has a very good slider. Being able to use it like that, back door to righty, is a big key for him to get strikes. Sabathia ahead 0-2 on Johnson. David, beyond the velocity, what about Sabathia's last start stood out to you that you thought, oh, that's a good sign? Actually, that slider. I, you know, I think that Sabathia has sort of been consumed with his changeup and pitching righties in two seamers, trying to sort of like Greg Maddox, sort of a swing back or what Ken Singleton, our colleague, calls a spillover two seamer. That's a hard pitch to learn. I think the backdoor slider and really working his slider behind in the count is a big key for him. Count holds at 0 and 2. Blue Jays already out to a 3-0 lead in the first inning on the A's. 
you know, the reason I say that about Sabathia, just speaking from experience, I know when you get into hitters' counts, rather than give in and throw a fastball, or on the nights when your changeup's not quite there, which has been the case with Sabathia, that you really need that, that slider, that backdoor slider to get a strike, to get back in the count. Stopped nicely there by McCann. Chris Colabello with a three-run homer. Blue Jays beginning play a half game behind the Yankees in the AL East. The Yanks have had sole possession of first place for 40 straight days. Those two teams will meet following this series in Cleveland. Tried the backdoor slider there, missed a little up. What a difference a week makes and that that goes to show you when people say oh there's a lot of games left it's you know still the middle of August what's well, true week to week things can really change dramatically. And we've seen over the last seven days those standings change dramatically. And the Blue Jays have picked up seven and a half games over the last two weeks. The 2 2 swing and a miss got him on a change it looked like for the second out. 84 miles an hour from Sabathia. Looks like the change you're right. Tried to get it down and away. It ends up down and in, but the speed really gets Johnson out in front, and it was down below the zone, too, as well. So big strike out there for Sabathia. And you see those standings. You know these are very important games against the Indians before this series in Toronto this weekend. Sabathia delivers strike one. So after the weekend in the Bronx, you know, we talked about the Blue Jays. and you know, This was really a trap series for me, Ryan. I know you and I talked about it. Because of the Cleveland Indians' power, young arms, it's hard to bust out of a slump when you got strikeout-type pitchers, young flamethrowers. Back-to-back from last night in Carrasco to Salazar tonight. Really puts the pressure on the pitching staff. Ninety one mile an hour fastball past the bat of Santana. Trevor Bauer no slouch tomorrow either for the Indians. You know, all the talk about the Yankees inactivity during the trade deadline. Why didn't they go get a pitcher? Well pitching is not the problem over the last week. Pitchers have fared very well. Including Luis Severino who's probably pitched better than anybody that you could have traded him for. Yankees over this last six game stretch in which they've gone one and five have pitched to a two three five ERA. You know, I thought it was interesting how Steinbrenner the Yankees owner you see Severino right there. Talked about that exact point you know all these prospects are so close to helping us in the big leagues. It's just tough to give up on them now for a rental say a David Price type pitcher. They just were, were not willing to do it. That ball. Hit high in the air to Gardner. And Sabathia escapes the jam. Strands runner on second, scoreless after one.
Dog Russo sits down for a new center stage with Michael K to discuss his career behind the mic. Don't miss center stage presented by your Tri-State Land Rover retailers tonight after the post game only on Yes. Looking forward to that. Mad Dog Russo always entertaining. Michael and him were competition for a while. Now buddies. As Mark Teixeira steps in to lead off the top of the second inning. Now the Yankees, one through five hitters over the last three games, entering tonight, two for 66. No homers, no ribbies, 23 strikeouts. You know, you could, you could say... All the old cliches say hey, it's just one loss or it's just five games, the stretch, but those numbers are very stark. And yes, it's only five games, of course, yeah. But nonetheless, you know, when you when you when you're the you have that kind of a slump, that deep, you know, it starts to affect you psychologically. It has a residual effect down the lineup. Guys start to press a little bit. The only way to bust out is for somebody to get some hits and score some runs. And it, and it really, the onus is on the veteran guys. Probably a good idea to get Ellsbury an off day, just give him an emotional break. Swing and a miss to Shero. Goes down on strikes. These aren't the easiest pitchers to try and break out of this slump against either. Well, that's the thing, too, is that here's that split. He calls it a split change, but that thing is just filthy, as you see. Kind of a hybrid splitter and corkscrew spin coming out, and it just dives off the table, and that's why Salazar averages 10-plus strikeouts per nine innings. As Ryan mentioned, third best in the AL. And he's throwing his changeup way more this year, David. That split change up to 20% this season, according to fan graphs, compared to under 13% a season ago. Yeah, it's pretty much fastball split for him. Almost 70% fastballs. And why not when you throw it 95? McCann hammers that. Deep right. Goodbye. A bomb from Brian McCann. And the Yankees strike first here in Cleveland. Nineteenth home run of the season for Brian McCann, and every run the Yankee can get at this point, they desperately need. You can see the life on the Yankees bench, and right on cue. That's what we're talking about. Somebody needs to do this. Loud sound off the bat. Take the pressure off of some of the other guys in this lineup. When you talk about chemistry on a team. This creates chemistry. A long home run. Smiles in the dugout all of a sudden. Doesn't sound like much, but it means a lot, especially when you're struggling. And a lead to work with as well. We talked with Brian McCann before the game. And I said, when you go through a rut like this, does anybody feel the need to say anything? He just said, we're good. We're good. Veteran team. We know this is how a season goes. And swings like that will help his theory prove true. As Beltron works a walk. Carlos Beltran has reached base in 13 straight games.
Gregorius smashes that deep to right. Sands back. It hangs up for him. And he will make the catch in front of the track. Had a better sound than it did distance. And here is Chris Young getting the start against the righty with Jacoby Ellsbury getting the day off. Great acoustics in this ballpark. The sound of the ball off the bat. It's easy to get fooled. I yeah. thought that was way out of here off the bat. Definitely had that sound. And even Sand started back like he was headed for the wall then all of a sudden had to circle in. Just a sound, right? Mm -hmm. Salazar misses away. Two and one. Brian McCann giving CC Sabathia a one nothing lead to work with. Flip back this way. Foul. I think if you look around the league at fourth outfielders, which is obviously what Chris Young is, he's got to be on a short list of the best ones product production wise this year. Getting a chance against a tough right handed pitcher. Because Ellsbury's day off. Swing and a miss. Young is retired. But the damage is done. Brian McCann goes yard, and the Yankees take a 1-0 lead. Center inspired medicine. Michael Pineda on the 15 day DL since July 30th through 25 pitches from a mound on Monday. Expected to throw a full bullpen tomorrow. We'll get a little more on that from Meredith Morakovic. Well, in that bullpen that he threw, he just threw his fastball and his changeup. He has not thrown any sliders yet. He's expected to do that tomorrow in a full 35 pitch bullpen. And then after that, Joe Girardi said they'll make a decision as far as what the next step is. Michael Pineda hoping the next step will be a rehab assignment. Now, I asked Joe Girardi how many rehab assignments, how re rehab starts he thinks Pineda will need. And he said, we're going to take this one game at a time, see how he progresses through each step and go for from there, but Pineda doesn't seem to think it'll take very long to get his arms stretched out again, considering he was only shut down for seven days. Thank you, Meredith. 
And that would obviously be good news, David. Welcome news. Might be just the thing that he needed to get a little break there. Obviously worried about innings management with Pineda. Popped up. Gregorius for the first out. I mean, his innings jump was on pace to be astronomical from where he was last year. Yeah, I know the Yankees were concerned about it. You never wish, you know, an injury on one of your pitchers. But as long as he's okay, comes back in September, could work out just fine for the Yankees. Sabathia tried that backdoor breaking ball, just missed. Steady diet of those all night for Sabathia. You know, almost like El Duque used to do it. When he needed a strike on left-handed hitters, he dropped that curveball in there at will in any count to get a strike. David, that felt like something Andy Pettit used a lot in his later years, too. Wasn't as cutter-heavy against yeah. righties. Absolutely. It takes, it's, a, it's a great way just to change a hitter's eye level flip a slider or a curveball in there for a strike great way to get back into the count too two and one on Giovanni Urshela you know, the thing is Ryan the more you throw it the better feel you get for it so then the next thing you know you're starting to thread the needle with that backdoor slider It's a little high, three and one. That's probably the toughest lesson for a power pitcher like Sabathia to learn is how to pitch backwards. He was so used to just throwing whatever he wanted or blowing fastballs by guys whenever he got in trouble for the majority of his career. The art of pitching backwards. Three one breaking balls, sliders, two one. At any time, protects your fastball when you do that. We've seen Sabathia get burned with his fastball at times this year in predictable counts. That's one way to alleviate that is to pitch backwards more often. A three two to Urshela. Chopped towards the middle. Gregorius the diving stab. Can he throw him out? No. Picked out by Teixeira. But Urshela beats it out on a heck of an effort from Didi Gregorius. Well, it seems like Didi is getting to everything nowadays, including this one when off the bat I didn't think he had a chance. And, boy, that was close. Obviously fully extended on the dive, and what a quick athletic move to jump up. Not the normal Gregorius arm strength, obviously, because he had to get rid of it so quickly, but right on that short hop, boy, that's close. Might have a little challenge here. And we do. Joe Girardi going to have them take a look. And with good reason, he's out. Easy, easily out. Ball in glove, foot still hadn't touched the bag. Nice stretch and pick by Teixeira once again, who's one of the best in the business at that particular play. David, that's a spectacular play by Gregorius. I mean, talk about the high degree of difficulty of just getting to that ball, the full extension, and then... How quick he popped right up. Ball's in the glove. Foot's not even close. No. That one shouldn't take too much time. And the headsets are off. And the out is called. As Didi Gregorius gets his web gem. You think about the double play that he made in last night's game. Really saved Severino early in that game. Severino was on the ropes early. And that ball was hard hit as well. And DD, a great play in the hole and turning a double play, really saved Severino last night. And then Severino took it from there and really righted himself. And in a review that took just 51 seconds. Let's take another look at that glorious play. Yes, Mo, presented by your Mercedes Benz dealers. 
An incredible range and athleticism. Tried the backdoor slaughter, just missed. It's a good pitch right there. Keep throwing it right there and put the pressure on the umpire to call that pitch. Tried it again. It's the right formula for CeCe at this point, especially with an all right-handed hitting lineup facing him tonight. The 2-1. Lifted to right. Easy for Beltron. And the inning is over. CeCe gets some help from Didi onto the third. Over 400 mobile and connected devices with MLB TV Premium. Real-time highlights, live look-ins, pitch tracking, and more. Every night on every device. Blackout and other restrictions apply. Visit MLB TV for details. On the Audi A3 scoreboard, the Yankees with a 1-0 lead on the Indians. Steven Drew with a homer yesterday in the sixth inning that ended a streak of 31 consecutive scoreless innings for the Yankees offense. See why Salazar gets so many swings and misses. The combination that 95 mile an hour fastball and right there an 83 mile an hour split change. And there's another swing and miss. Time for today's Toyota conversation. Toyota, the official hybrid vehicle of the Yankees. We've asked you, how does progressive field hold up versus other retro style ballparks that have opened in the last 25 years? And Don Finucci tweets in, progressive field is a beautiful ballpark with a great deal of charm. However, I do miss it being called Jacobs Field. 
Follow Yes Network and tweet us your responses using the hashtag Yankees Prius to keep the conversation going. I kind of miss calling it Jacobs Field, too. The Jake was cool. Yeah. Kind of like the Sky Dome in, in Toronto. Yeah. That was better. I understand sponsorships. Sure. You got to go with the flow, but yeah, the Jake and Sky Dome, my two favorites. That's one of the beauties of Yankee Stadium. It'll always be Yankee Stadium. Don't have to worry about that. Gardner slaps that to right center. Almonte is under it for the second out. It's a good swing by Gardner right there. Just a little bit under it. It's good to see, you know, the Yankee hitters with some aggressive swings tonight. You know, we talked about it's not easy to bust out of a slump against young power pitchers. Yeah. Cleveland as a whole is really underachieved this year. Headley rolls that one into the shift. Nice play by Ramirez to end the inning. The Yankees go down in order. The Indians middle infield continues to flash leather. Two in theaters September 25th by your Tri-State BMW centers and by Remax. Nobody sells more real estate than Remax. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame standing proudly on a beautiful Wednesday night in Cleveland. Taking a look at the Audi A3 scoreboard. The Yankees with a one nothing lead on the Indians. Ryan Rucco, David Cohn. Meredith Morakovitz, happy to be with you. CC Sabathia has looked pretty sharp through the first two innings, building on what may have been his best start of the year last time out against the Red Sox. I think it probably was, considering everything stuff wise, it, it was his best start. The 1-0. And CC falls behind 3-0. See the ball strike ratio early. And CC walks Roberto Perez on four pitches.
Here's Mike Avilas. The pinch hit in last night's 5 4 Indians win. Gets the start today with all the lefties being sat down. And looks at strike one. The 0 1. That is laced into right center. Long run for Gardner, who will get there to make the catch for the first down. A tremendous jump off the bat from Gardner. As you're right, Ryan, this ball is smoked. Watch Gardner's right there. Two, three, four, five quick steps. Boy, he covered a lot of ground on a ball that was on the line. Shading a little bit that way. So good defensive positioning, too. Good scouting on Avilas. Here's Jose Ramirez, who's single to lead off the first. Ramirez had really struggled offensively, was sent down to Triple A Columbus, then hit nearly 300 there while at Triple A. Called back up when Jason Kipnis got hurt, and since he's come back up, has done a much better job offensively. Yes, very good job. Getting excellent at bats. And there is Jason Kipnis. Who's still the American League batting average leader. You're right. I mean, when you when you look at Cleveland this year, there were high expectations. The pitching's still there. Pitching really is very solid, as predicted. The offense hasn't been there. But you you mentioned it last night, Ryan. That they feel like they could still turn this around quickly with the right offseason moves. Yeah. I think it was a good thing that they did not pull the trigger and trade one of their young pitchers, namely Carlos Carrasco, who was rumored to go to Toronto. Very close in that deal to happening. And the Swisher deal with Jason Bourne that brought over Chris Johnson, part of the motivation behind that is because the way the money was exchanged, Cleveland ends up with more to spend this offseason. Michael Bourne, excuse me. <laughs> I'm in an action movie yeah. sort of mood, David. And it's a good movie. Yeah, it's a great movie. I think he's coming back, actually. We'll need confirmation on that, but I'm pretty sure. He is. Nothing against Jeremy Renner, but I'm very excited that Matt Damon's returning. Here's the payoff to Jose Ramirez. Grounded. Off Headley past Gregorius into left. Heading towards third is Perez, and the throw is wide. On to second goes Ramirez, and the Indians are set up with second and third. And we'll see how they score it. Well, tough, tough play for Headley. He almost gets there in the ricochet twice off of Gregorius. Ends up allowing the runner to go to third inexplicably. The ball's thrown to third base. There is no reason for, for Chris Young to make this throw to third base. I mean, for a veteran outfielder, a big mistake allows the runner to go to second with one out. You lose the chance for the double play. And not only the choice to throw it to third, the execution of that throw was pretty poor. And they'll say a single in just a second on the throw and not charge any kind of error. That's an error all the way because 
the throw allowed the, the, the runner to get to second base. And it was a, as you mentioned, a poor throw at that. Poor throw and a poor decision. And now Sabathia trying to work out of trouble. that decision by Young. Well, especially on the double ricochet. I mean, there's just no chance. That ball's just not going to get to Young. And you see right there, I mean, the runner's already three quarters of the way to third. And if there's any doubt at all, you've got to preserve the double play ball there. He's a veteran outfielder. Certainly, he knows better. He knows he made a mistake. The one, two. He is poked foul down the right field line. And Brian McCann will go chat with CC Sabathia. You know, we've talked about Sabathia all year long. He's had a lot of starts where he's just kind of cruising along and then the one bad inning. Murphy's Law inning kind of you can't make the pitch to get out of it. He surrendered a major league high 13 leads this season. No one two. He is fouled away. We could tell he doesn't have the velocity David that he did in his last start. Yeah, up to 92 right there. We saw several 94 mile an hour fastballs back in New York. For the most part, he's been 89, 90 so far today. 91. Count two and two. The pitch count starting to get up there a little bit for Sabathia. 52 pitches. The 2-2. Two -two. He's low and it's 3-2. and two. Got ahead 1-2. See, there, here's the situation with Sabathia. Trying to finish hitters when he does get ahead. Tried the change up down, missed. Tried the backdoor slider, missed. You're kind of in search mode for which pitch is going to finish them off when you do get ahead. Payoff. Foul straight back. Tries to go fastball in, left it out a bit. So Sabathia kind of in search mode. You see McCann wants this in, and that's up and away. Up and out of the zone is the part that probably saved him there. The ability to finish off these right-handed batters. What's your go-to finish pitch? We see it with Salazar. It's a split change. With Sabathia, it's kind of search mode. The payoff. Just missed ball four, and the bases are loaded. Girardi is on the phone. Back to the video guy right here. That's not the bullpen bone. He wants to know where that pitch was. He's frustrated with the strike zone. It has been a bit of a tight zone so far for both pitchers. You can see that ball's probably low. As Lindor, Pete Rose style, looks it right into the glove. David Rackley, your home plate umpire. Yeah, young umpire. Can't really say he's missed a lot of pitches, but certainly any borderline pitch has gone the hitter's way so far. So now the base is loaded for Chris Johnson. And Johnson ahead 1 and 0. Swing and a miss. 
92 from Sabathia. Well, Chris Johnson, since coming over in the big Braves trade, is 7 for 10. You see career with the bases loaded. Pretty good. 309. Got a big contract from the Braves when he was going well and then really fell on hard times the last couple of years. A 1-1. One, one. Yeah, a couple of years ago, as you're talking about David, he 321 in 2013 with Atlanta. 816 OPS. But last year that dropped off the table to 653 in the OPS category. The 2 1. Swing and a miss. Two and two. Good job of pitching backwards, as we said, right there for Sabathia, the changeup. Johnson in swing mode. Very aggressive. Changeup down right over the middle half of the plate. Inside middle half. Perez on third. Ramirez on second. And Lindor on first. The 2 2 from CeCe. Grounded hard but foul. And the count holds at 2 and 2. You know, Ryan, when I talk about pitching backwards, you know, what I mean is don't give in. In fastball counts, you've got to have off speed pitches you can throw in the strike zone. And then if you do that, you throw breaking stuff early in the count, then you can finish with your fastball late. Yeah. As opposed to traditionally get ahead with your fastball and then finish with your off speed stuff. See if CC tries the fastball. That's grounded hard. Could be two. To second for one, on to first. A double play to end the inning and the threat. Sabathia makes a big pitch when he needs it. And now we'll have a little discussion with David Rackley. But the 5 4 3 double play, and the Yankees escape. of this three-game set. Pre-game at 6.30 and then extra innings on, yes. Following the game, the action will be on Pix 11. And then Yankees Blue Jays begin their three-game series Friday with coverage starting at 6.30 right here on yes. On the Lincoln scoreboard, the Yankees a 1-0 lead on the Indians. As Alex Rodriguez hammers that into center. Now Monte back right on the lip of the track will put it away.
Those are better swings from Gardner and Rodriguez. We saw McCann with the homer. See Rodriguez the second time in a row gets a fastball right there aggressively going after it just a bit under it. As to share takes strike one. To share struck out in his first at bat. The Blue Jays have a 10 2 lead over the A's in the second inning. So even more of a premium on the Yankees getting this win, snapping the four game losing streak. You know, a lot of numbers in today's game trying to evaluate pitching. One simple number that's easy to understand is how many swings and misses do you get as a pitcher? Shero whips that right at the third baseman Urshela. And we will get that number from David in a moment as we take a look at the Honda League leaders and strikeouts per nine innings. Danny Salazar is fifth on that list. Chris Sale first. Right on cue, yes. That, that's an important evaluator to me for pitchers. It's popped up. And we'll just make the seats. I mean, certainly it's important to throw strikes, work fast, change speeds, all the old cliches. Use your defense, put it in play, no free passes. But at the same time, the pitchers that can miss bats, those are the ones that, that win big games. Those are the ones that win in the postseason, the ones that miss bats. Yeah. McCann. Smashes that into left center. Almonte on the run will watch Avilas make the catch for the final out of the inning. Hard contact, but no dice in the fourth. As New York's new power trio of Villa, Pirlo, and Lampard lead the charge against Eastern Conference leading DC United. New York City FC presented by Etihad Airways tomorrow at 7 right here on ES. On the Lincoln scoreboard, the Yankees a 1-0 lead on the Indians. Bottom of the fourth inning. CC Sabathia quickly back out on the mound after a fast top of the fourth. So Matthew escaping the third 
getting an inning ending 5 4 3 double play to escape a bases loaded jam. Against a very hot hitter, Chris Johnson. And there's strike one. Santana looks at ball two. I asked Samantha about pitching here, and he said, Oh, I get fired up. I get amped to pitch here. His home away from home. Where he's had a lot of success as a Yankee. Three and one, a 1 9 1 ERA as a Yankee here at Progressive. That's why I was saying that, you know, that Sabathia can be a very good influence on Luis Severino. Sabathia, as we mentioned before, was just 20 years old when he made his debut with the Indians. Severino, 21 years old, the youngest to start a major league game this year. Backdoor slider just misses. And Sabathia getting very close on that pitch all night, David. Well, this was, you know, interpretation of strike zones. To me, boy, that's really a good pitch from a veteran pitcher. And that's a pitch Sabathia needs. The payoff. Chop foul. One of the keys, you know, as I, as I mentioned, you know, as a veteran pitcher, the art of pitching backwards, uh, changing it up, making the adjustments later in your career when your stuff starts to diminish. And when you go to pitch backwards, your off speed pitches have to be thrown for strikes. You can't try to trick them always out of the zone. Change ups down. Broken bat that floats into center field for a base hit. Santana just always seems to work the count. Time now for you to tweet your strongest fan photo. Use the hashtag YesDataStrongFan, and you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast. Brought to you by T-Mobile. The Indians with base runners in all four innings thus far against Sabathia. Who has stranded all of them. Ball one to Jerry Sands. Skips away from McCann and on to second goes Santana. One oh change up just pulls it down in the dirt. Sort of a case in point right there Ryan you know that's a. Sort of a fastball count. If you're going to throw a change up there, you got to get it in the strike zone. You can't try to trick a guy out of the zone and fall 2-0. That's rolled slowly to the left side. Headley will glove and toss in time. Good base running from Santana who moves to third. Wild pitch. Good last pitch there from Sabathia on a jam shot, but now in another situation. One out man on third. And Urshela, who grounded out to short on an excellent play by Didi Gregorius. The Yankees have the infield in. Swing and a miss. Major League Baseball's average really it's been pretty constant in this situation for several years just a little bit over 50% success rate man on third base less than two outs sacrifice fly situation 
Right to Gregorius, the infield in works. As Santana is anchored at third, and now there are two outs. Two of the best changeups Sabathia has thrown tonight. Picked the right spot for it. Sabathia limiting damage thus far. Giving up base runners, but making big pitches. Working very hard. Pitch number 74 coming up here. Two outs in the bottom of the fourth. And the Yankee bullpen taxed last night in a 16-inning loss. Joe Girardi said, Betances, Miller, Shreve all available. He would not commit, or he did not bring up the names of Warren or Wilson in saying they're available. He just said some of the other guys not sure he would use. So you do the math, eliminate some of them, and who knows if Warren or Wilson would be arms he'd use. Fresh arms up, though. There's mm -hmm. Capuano. Goody. That's a goody, yeah. That's cued to first. And Sabathia will get out of it again. He's held the Indians to 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. Yankees still holding on to a 1-0 lead. Those two teams will meet for three games beginning Friday in Toronto on the Big O.T. scoreboard. Yankees won and the Indians nothing. And David, they won 12 of 13 and that offense is just roaring right now. Yes, and they obviously play very well at home. Lifted in the air to left center. Almonte over for the call and the catch. One out. Let's go ahead and give you the Jeep hitter scouter report here. We're going to stay at home here with the Yankees. It's a Yankee broadcast. We could do a Yankee Why hitter, not? right? Yeah, sure. D.D. Gregorius, of course, surging offense since July 23rd. He has a 417 batting average. That's the best in the league. That just kind of shows you how good it's going for him. Opposite field hits, very important. 33, according to the Elias Bureau. Leads the Yankees on the season, including 19 of those opposite field hits in the last 32 games. That's second only to DJ LeMahieu, great young player in Colorado, becoming a real asset, number three on that, Ryan. Yeah. His defense, that arm. That arm is unbelievable. And you and I spent a lot of time talking about it yesterday. 
So I talked to Didi about whether or not he's ever been clocked as he goes the other way again, but this time into the glove of Mike Avilas. And we'll check in on that Didi story in a moment, but first, Bob. Now stepping to the plate for New York, the left fielder, Chris Young. Sounds good, Bob. So I asked him, have you been clocked shortstop to first? How hard do you throw? He said never been clocked short to first that he knows of. But when he was clocked right field to third base eight years ago, he said he was clocked at 95 miles an hour. So I said, you must have pitched growing up. He said, oh, yeah, I pitched all the time. And I said, did you ever throw any no-hitters? He said, I threw tons of them. <laughs> Said I have tons of trophies for my pitching. And I can't say I'm surprised that he's been clocked at 95 when we see the way he whips it across the diamond. Yes. Very talented young man coming into his own, as we said, becoming a real asset. Filling some very large shoes in the form of Derek Jeter. And as Young works the walk. Had James Smythe do some research for me too on this and contrasting Stephen Drew the type of hits he's gotten this year and his his tendencies with DD Gregorius and he's got some different numbers Gregorius 44% opposite field hits this year Stephen Drew only 16% so you think about the styles drew you know everybody's talked about Stephen drew he's hit the ball hard yes he's got some power hit the home run last night but with the extreme shifts employed against him the frustrating part is his inability to go the other way more opposite field hits I asked Gregorius about that as well and, and his approach why he comes up with so many opposite field hits. He said, that's just me. That's the way I hit. When I'm normal, that's just where I hit the ball. Yeah, he's got the most opposite field hits on the Yankees, does DD. And Stephen Drew goes the other way 18.5% of the time. That's 186th out of 199 qualifiers with 300 plate appearances. And a lot of times, David, for those reasons, he has a wide open left side of the infield, not in this case with Young on first, but you could see often when Stephen Drew is stepping to the plate with nobody on base, and they're still shifted a bit. You see Lindor pull towards the back at second. But Drew a lot of times has that left side vacated. You know, part of that is style. You know, if you think about it, Ryan, the way the way I learned how to approach hitters as a pitcher is there's two distinct styles of hitting. One thing, Joe Carter, swing the barrel of the bat, more of a hooking style around the ball. And then the opposite of that is think Derek Jeter, lead with the knob of the bat, the inside outstroke, two extreme ends. Stephen Drew definitely more in the Joe Carter category. Swings the barrel of the bat first meaning trying to get the barrel of the bat around and out in front of the ball, pull the ball. Outside pitches, he reaches out and tries to pull and hook. And some of those he's hit for home runs. Yeah. This is the swing the barrel. See, the barrel of the bat leads instead of the knob or the hands. It's more of what I would describe as a hooking style of hitting. Work for Joe Carter. <laughs> Joe Carter hit a lot of home runs. Yeah. It's hard to change your style. It just wouldn't. That's the way you learned how to hit. Wave and a miss from Drew, and he is retired, inning over. On to the bottom of the fifth with the Yankees holding a 1 0 lead.
Lombardi Show as the skipper breaks down the AL East after a big series with the Blue Jays. Plus, get your questions answered via Twitter. It's all new Sunday, 5 o'clock, only on ES. Look at that gorgeous sunset. On the Bigelow T scoreboard, the Yankees a 1-0 lead over the Indians. Our director, John Wilson, actually took a camera himself out in a boat to give us that shot, David. Dedication. Yeah, intrepid. CC Sabathia has wiggled out of trouble. Inning after inning, getting big outs. Holding the Indians 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position. One thing we have seen from Sabathia, you know, we talked about his last start and how dominating he was, the eight strikeouts, eight swinging strikeouts, the increased velocity. That's not the case tonight. But he has avoided the big inning, and he is pitching very carefully. Not giving in. 2-0 sinker right there at the bottom of the zone. See Sabathia very careful that his misses aren't over the middle of the plate and off the plate. So if that means that your pitch count's going to be elevated through five, so be it. That's okay, especially when you know your team's not scoring runs. The old Sabathia, he was trying to go nine and challenging guys more. That is poked to right field, a base hit for Roberto Perez, who takes a wide turn and then hangs on. We've seen it all night, David. CC Sabathia working his way in and out of trouble. Yes, without a doubt. You can see here. Big double play ball off the bat of Chris Johnson and a good turn from Drew at second. Sabathia loves it. Change up down, infield playing in. One of the best change ups CC's thrown tonight. You see there a sinker down. I think he's got a good read early. He doesn't have that same fastball he had in his last start, so he's pitching very carefully. Once again, you got a leadoff guy on here, and 80 pitches here in the fifth with no out. Avila shows bunt, takes a strike. I asked Cece what was different for him last start, and he just said the same stuff, velocity he thought maybe could have been up because when it's a little bit warmer, that happens with him sometimes on a hot day, on a humid night. It's certainly true. I, that that, that uh, was my experience too. Especially later in my career. The older you get, the warmer weather you need. <laughs> get that arm loose. You're get that body that. loose. Yes. Sabathia ahead of Avilas, 0 and 2. An important game for the Yankees with Toronto holding a 10-3 lead over Oakland in the fourth inning. And the Yankees holding on to a half game AL East lead. The Yankees have one run on one hit. That a home run by Brian McCann. <laughs> that fan wanted that ball desperately. But it was meant for the little kid. It's okay, sir. The little kid got it. You're good. One, two. Now tip to stay alive.
lot of pitches for Sabathia who you would think David. This is in all likelihood. Unless he has a double play and gets out of this quickly could very well be his final inning of work. Yeah, we've noted that Girardi's had Sabathia on a very short leash with regard to pitch counts. Not letting him get up above 100. That could be two or through, and it's a single. Had just enough on it to skip through the infield. And runners on first and second with nobody out. Yeah, once it gets past Sabathia with the infield playing a double play depth, no real chance as Avilas is played pretty much straight up. He uses the whole field, so no shift on Avilas. You see the proverbial seeing eye ground ball right back up the box. So eight and nine are on for Cleveland, and we'll see what Terry Francona wants to do with Jose Ramirez. Ramirez shows bunt, pops it up. Foul. Ramirez has been a thorn in the Yankee side both last night and tonight so far. Two for two at three hits last night. Shows bunt again. Chopped. Grabbed by McCann. He'll go to first. The only play and the sacrifice successful. Two three on the putout. And Sears does the job. Right off of home plate, which made that a little scary. McCann's got to cover a lot of ground and throw on the run. Well, that was a big hop off of home plate. So Sabathia who has held the Indians. 0 for 6 with runners in scoring position tonight. We'll try and. Add to the right column of that total. In. One run will score. Hanging on at third is Avilas. It's an RBI single for Francisco Lindor, and this game is tied at one. Lindor has shown good contact skills. He's not up there to walk. These guys hack and slash. Lindor just 10 walks on the year. It's noted as kind of his low on base percentage, but good hands, uses the whole field. And Sabathia is still trying to work out of this jam with Chris Johnson grounding into what could be an inning ending double play and is. So the damage limited on another double play grounder. The Indians do tie the score at one.
biggest collectibles of the season. It's Jacoby Ellsbury bobblehead night, the third in the 2015 collectible series, presented by AT&T. For the first 18,000 guests in attendance, for tickets, log on to Yankees.com. Visit the Yankee Stadium ticket window. Yankees clubhouse shops are called Ticketmaster at 877-469-9849. That guy will be there. You know, the bobblehead actually made its way to Cleveland with us. A lot of uh, special packaging to preserve it. It made its way. I actually heard that they are now getting rid of bubble wrap. Did you hear this? No. Yeah. Got a new product out there? It's I better? I guess so. There's some reason. I, I read a story about it. I like popping the little bubbles in the bubble wrap, yeah. you know? That was one of the coolest parts about, like, getting a package, right? Is taking out the bubble wrap and snapping it, stepping on it. No more. Knowing social media, David, I'm sure someone's going to tweet at both of us instantly why all of a sudden bubble wrap is being put aside. That's right. That's the beauty of Twitter. It's instant content for you. You need an idea? Gardner needed that. Seen Salazar get a couple of those splitters up. Gardner takes advantage. Just the second hit for the Yankees tonight. And we mentioned it before, but Gardner hitting under 180 in his last 21 games, including those first at bats tonight before that hit. A much needed stroke from Gardner. Gardner leads off first. He was thrown out, attempting to steal last night. And he's off again. Swing and a miss to throw down in plenty of time. Gardner is dead. I think this one was more of a hit and run. I think Girardi put on a play, which means that Gardner's got to make sure the pitcher goes home and trust that Headley will protect him. Headley swings through this pitch. That's a hit and run. Gardner's a dead duck. So that's the difference between a straight steal and a hit and run play. On a hit and run play, you have to make sure the pitcher delivers at home. And you see Headley. That's why Gardner's out by so much right there, because he had to wait. Right. Yes, Mo, presented by your Mercedes Benz dealers as Headley. Unable to make contact at any point in the at-bat, strikes out. You can kind of sense that Joe Girardi's desperate to get some action. Yeah. Try to put a play on right there, but a, Salazar, a tough guy to hit and run on because of his swing and miss ability. Well, you talked about it before, David. You gave the number. I mean, Salazar is right up there amongst the league leaders when it comes to swings and misses. He's fifth in the American League in swing and miss percentage. Yeah, Cleveland has three of the top six pitchers, Kluber, Salazar, and Carrasco, and Pineda's on that list at number six, and of course, usual suspects of Chris Sale and Chris Archer at the top. Girardi was talking about that very circumstance yesterday. He said, you know, you can't hit and run. You can't steal if there's no one on base. Well, finally get somebody from the top of his order on. And the hit and run does not work out as Rodriguez waves and misses. Pretty amazing, though, David. And I know that was a hit and run, but that Gardner doesn't have a steal since June 12. Side corner. Rodriguez is bounced into a nifty double play.
flown out deep to center. And his two at bats. Salazar's pitch count in pretty good shape. And it'll stay in good shape. Inning over. On to the bottom of the sixth. Own. Meredith Morakovitz with you, our producer Troy Benjamin, director John Wilson, Mike Medvin, Ryan Rutherford in the truck. Appreciate you being with us. After hanging for 16 innings last night, right back at it, the middle game of this three game set between the Yankees and Indians tonight. And CeCe Sabathia out there to start the sixth, the high pitch count, but David. That bullpen was taxed last night. It was, and you understand why Girardi feels the need to push Sabathia here, even though he hasn't really allowed him over 100 pitches in the last several starts. He's gone 14 straight under 100. He's already at 18 under the century mark this season. And to give you an idea of how high that number is for CeCe, he had never even had double digit amount of starts. Where he threw under 100 pitches with the Yankees. Nine was his high prior. So he is being yanked earlier as that's foul. But no real choice, and there's no action in the Yankee bullpen right now. I think your choice here for Girardi would be okay, we got to go to one of the call ups, maybe Goody. At this point, he's probably better suited for this role. Capuano's more of a guy that's uh, you know, a spot starter or an, really a long guy. Popped up. Will it stay in? No. So if you're looking for somebody to pitch the sixth inning, it'd have to be Goody at this point. So Girardi opting to stay with this veteran in Sabathia. Then try to put the rookie in this game at this point. Even though we may see him later. This is the kind of game that Sabathia needed more of earlier in this year. You know, it was sort of that one bad inning. He's been able to avoid that so far, right up here into the sixth. And a base hit to start things here for Santana. Let's check back in the studio and get an update from Bob Lorenz.
And you know what, Bob? The Yankees will take that with the Orioles losing. Baltimore now five games in back of the Yankees. As Sabathia paints on the inside corner. Yeah, it was Iwakuma that drew a lot of interest around the trade deadline. Just about every team in need of pitching asked about him, and Seattle said, no, we like him, we're going to keep him, and I'm sure they're glad they did. Similar decisions that Cleveland made, as you talked about with Carrasco. That is lined into center field, a base hit, as it skips towards Gardner. And the first two are on here in the sixth for the Indians. Fastball in, just doesn't get there. Sands just beats it to the punch. It's more inner third than on the corner. And it's hit well. So now, first and second, nobody out. As you said, Ryan, this is on Sabathia right here in this inning. Yeah, they have just started stirring in the Yankee bullpen. But nothing until that hit from Sands. Sabathia has been able to work his way out of trouble all night. And it is Chase and Shreve who gets up. Good located fastball for strike one. The Indians one for eight with runners in scoring position today. First time now in the last... 14 starts that CC has hit the century mark in pitch count. The 0 1. Chopped to Headley slowly. He'll go to second in time. Bold decision and the right one from Headley. Yeah, the chopper again down right off a home plate, just too high to think about too. But Headley, yes, that's an important play. Preserve the double play. The gutsy, as you said, Ryan, but a good play and a good decision. And so Sebastian now trying to. Wiggle out of another jam. The double play ball has been his friend tonight. Has come up with a couple of big ones. And delivers strike one to Abraham Almonte. Shreve continues to throw in the Yankee bullpen. With Santana on third and Urshel on first in a 1 1 game. That's line into center field, base hit, Indians lead. <laughs> 2 1 Cleveland after the RBI single from Abraham Almonte. Looks like Girardi's poised on the stop step, and you can see this ball drifts back over the middle a bit. Look at Sabathia's reaction on an 0-1 pitch. Too good of a pitch in this situation, and he knew it. Needed to be down for a ground ball, and look at Sabathia. He knew it. The ball just kind of cut on him. Sometimes those two-seamers cut instead of sink. He kind of got double-crossed, and it cost him. As Girardi still poised. Going to ride out Sabathia here in the sixth. Big swing there from Perez, who has walked and singled. And Joe Girardi going to hang with Sabathia and give him the chance to get out of this.
Yeah, one on the outside corner. Owen oh two. See, Perez does not like the call, but it was a good changeup. Sabathia going off speed there, right at the bottom of the zone. Here's the 0-2 from Sabathia. On the inside corner, strike three and a big one for CC Sabathia. Well, Perez can shake his head all he wants, but these are too close to take. Now, the previous pitch is a strike. That is well placed. A young player, a catcher no less. It's an excellent pitch from Sabathia. Now, maybe it's just off borderline in. The previous one was a strike. The changeup down and away. CC going to stay out there. 106 pitches to go after Mike Avilas. With two on and two out, and the Indians leading 2 1. Okay. Avilas, good numbers against Sabathia. CC over 100 pitches for the first time since May 11th. Does just seem to see the ball very well out of Sabathia's hand. Not even offering it that changeup down and away. He has lined out to center and single. Important batter here for Sabathia. See Sabathia and McCann the first time tonight. Little uncertainty. Sabathia shaking off twice. This copyrighted telecast is presented by authority of the New York Yankees and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the New York Yankees. Sabathia. Deals his 110th pitch down and away. It's three and one. And Sabathia with his next pitch will set a new season high. A three one. Broken bat on a hop to Gregorius, the long throw in time. What a play! Didi Gregorius unleashing the cannon, and the Yankees escape further trouble. That is about as good as it gets when it comes to the right arm of a shortstop. Whoa, what a throw!
Walker for the Yankees. And a tremendous play to end the bottom of the sixth and help CC Sabathia get out of trouble. Six innings of two run ball for Sabathia. Now waiting for the bats to come alive still. And Teixeira on cue with a leadoff single. Yeah, I don't, I don't think you can say enough about how difficult some of these plays that Gregorius has made. We're talking about diving, and the, when he dives, he gets up so quickly. Like here, pop right up, and then got something on the throw tonight in this one. Broken bat, flat-footed, nothing but arm strength. He couldn't get anything else but the strength of his arm speed on that throw, and it was enough. David, as he's throwing that, I'm thinking, well, he's on his back feet. He has no chance here. No way that he's going to make that play, and he made it. Really saved Sabathia right there, and, and Girardi as well. We talked about Sabathia not being able to be allowed to get over 100 pitches, and Girardi rode him out in that sixth inning and gave up the one run. McCann gets under it and pops out. David, CC Sabathia gives you six innings, two runs. You're going to sign for that every time right now. Well, it's a thing, you know, and it, it was it was a struggle for Sabathia. I mean, he gave up nine hits and two walks, so 11 base runners in six innings. He certainly benefited from Gregorius and the defense behind him. But these are the kind of starts, you know, that, that you would take from Sabathia at this point in his career. At the end of my career, those are the kind of starts I had. Stay away from the big inning. Keep your team in the game. Especially on the nights when you're struggling. He didn't have his good stuff tonight. His good command. Yankees still waiting for the offense to awaken. Trailing 2-1. And the Yankees with just three hits thus far tonight off Danny Salazar, who has been as advertised as Kyle Crockett warms. Salazar's pitch count in very good shape at 85 pitches. That's hammered there. Down into the right field corner. Teixeira on his way to third. He will hold up there. Beltron is at second with a double. And the Yankees are set up here in the seventh. Carlos Beltran continues to swing the bat well as another hanging changeup up in the zone, which is the red flag for Francona. And good job by Beltran to stay back, go out and cover it, and yank it down in the corner. But Beltran continues to swing the bat with authority. Talked about it yesterday, but worth mentioning again, David. Carlos Beltran hitting after that double right around 295 since the beginning of May with a very good OPS in the 840s and a big home run last night to tie this game in the eighth inning. A big double tonight to set the Yankees up in the seventh and the Yankees' hottest hitter. Coming to the plate, Didi Gregorius. Almost amazing you can say that, considering the way he started. No doubt about it. What an asset he has become. He's shown unbelievable range tonight at short. A big spot right here for him. A good take right there on the first pitch. Lay off of that nasty split change down. Try to get something up that he can drive to the outfield. And you see right there. 455 since July 23rd in these situations. The two ducks on the pond. And Gregorius tried a little chip. Came up empty. 
one and one. Back to back splitters. Took the first one. Offered it the second. The one one. And Didi jumps rope to get out of the way. Salazar just overthrows this third splitter in a row. For the most part, other than the McCann home run, Salazar cruising. This is really the first trouble spot he's had in the game. Gregorius pops it up. That is not going to do the job. Everybody converging, and it's Salazar who will make the catch for the second out. We'll go pitch by pitch here. You see the splitter down, good take. Backs it up and just over the top of it. Yanks that one down and in and gets a good pitch to drive right there, up and over the plate. Catcher doesn't see it. The pitcher's got to get out of the way there. See Urshela looking at Salazar as if, what are you doing? Urshela was calling for that. So Chris Young will get the chance to hit with second and third, two outs in the seventh inning against the righty Salazar. Salazar really got away with another changeup up to Gregorius there. And a big cut from Young foul back. David, you surprised at all that Young is getting the chance against the righty here? I know Ellsbury's slumping. He is on the bench as a left-handed bat. Yeah, that's the thing. Um, against Salazar right here, he does have a lefty warming up down there. So, uh, obviously, Girardi is thinking ahead here and decides Ellsbury with the day off is probably better and go ahead and give Young a shot here. Young has gotten some big hits this season for the Yankees as well as in 2014. The 0 1. Popped up. That one will make its way back into the seats. And it's 0 2. But these are the, the split second decisions that the managers have to make, obviously. And you see, Girardi, it's not an easy one. Crockett is not a household name. The lefty warming up in the bullpen, that most assuredly would be the matchup Ellsbury and Crockett. Otherwise, you've got Salazar, a tough righty, at the end of the rope here against Young. And you see the stark difference in the numbers for Young against righties and lefties. Trying to come up with a hit against a tough, hard throwing righty right here. With runners on second and third, two outs. Swing and a miss. Salazar got it. The runners are stranded, and the lead is preserved by Salazar.
the game summary brought to you by our local Nissan dealer. Brian McCann solo home run, the only run in another struggle for the Yankee offense. A couple of RBI singles for the Indians, including one in the bottom of the sixth. And that's where we stand here in the bottom of the seventh as Joe Girardi makes the Verizon call to the bullpen and chasing Shreve on to try and keep it right here, David. Very good numbers, as Yankee fans know very well by now. And also, he's been in the right place at the right time, which explains that 6-1 and one record. Shreve threw last night. A scoreless inning. So that was an interesting end of the inning, Ryan. You're right. I mean, the Girardi did have a tough choice there. Do you stay with Young against the tough Salazar or pinch hit Ellsbury and go lefty on lefty with Crockett, the reliever that was warming up? And instead, Salazar striking out Young on three pitches as Shreve tosses in strike one. Jason Shreve threw just 11 pitches last night. Big time opportunity for the Yankee offense in the top of that seven with second and third and just one out. And your hottest hitter at the plate, Didi Gregorius. And David, you mentioned it, a pitch to hit as well, just got under it. Yeah, Salazar threw him four straight changeups. That ball is smashed. Deep left, fair ball, it's trouble. It is a foul ball. Jose Ramirez does not look like a guy with a 214 batting average in these last two games. He has been on everything. He looks much more like the guy who hit 293 at AAA when he was sent down. Indians might have themselves a high quality problem. It's not really a problem because Jason Kipnis is one of the best second basemen in baseball, but. All of a sudden, some depth at that position. Yes. It's certainly uh, a valuable commodity. 54 footer blocked by McCann. Now, Jose Ramirez had won the shortstop job at a spring train. He was up here playing short with Kipnis at second, and then. Hit poorly enough to get sent down. Francisco Lindor continued to rise up the minor league ranks. So Lindor came up as the shortstop and was playing with Kipnis. Then Kipnis went on the DL and Ramirez moved to second up here. You know, the value of being able to be versatile is so helpful in today's games. The Yankees have found that out, trying to find a backup shortstop. Infielders that could play multiple positions. Here's the payoff. Gregorius will get the show off the arm again. One out. It'll be interesting to see what the Yankees do coming up in the next couple of weeks. Obviously, they DFL'd. Garrett Jones. Garrett Jones again and uh, second time around they're carrying the extra pitcher they're short one player on the bench so you would anticipate some moves coming up and a lot of talk about the Yankees and activity at the deadline keeping their prospects and they really do have three or four guys knocking on the door and I guess the question would be David if it if it was one of those guys a, a Greg Bird and Aaron Judge whoever it might be are you comfortable with bringing them up to have a couple at bats a week? Yeah, that, that's going to be interesting to see exactly the move they make, what they think they need. Sometimes at this point in the season, a little bit of youth can add a little in energy to a team that's struggling, slumping. Every year, the minor league coaches and managers vote on who they think the best players were in each individual league, AAA and AA, and they just came out. The Yankees prospects fared very well among their peers 
not scouts, not writers. These are, the, you know, the coaches and managers. Luis Severino, best fastball in AAA, best breaking pitch in AAA. Aaron Judge, best prospect in AA, best outfield arm in AA. Gregorius charging. What a laser. Two out. Obviously, Aaron Judge now in AAA. But Luis Severino, not only the best fastball, the best breaking pitch he was judged by in AAA by the coaches and managers. Greg Bird was judged the best defensive first baseman in AA by the AA that? managers. So that was a little bit of a surprise by me that, you know, we know about Greg Bird's bat. He's been hot lately, so if you're looking for some offense, I'm sure he's getting some consideration. And he was drafted as a catcher. Moved to first. And I guess has picked up the position quite well. Obviously, you've got Teixeira at first, but Girardi said, you know, he didn't want to place Teixeira every day over the next 16 games in 16 days. So, interesting decision. Also, Rob Refsnyder, the best strike zone judgment in the International League in AAA. So, we saw a little bit of that with Refsnyder when he was up. All those players knocking on the door. Very professional approach at the plate from Ref Snyder. So well, you it's interesting. Yeah, it is, David. And you mentioned Bird being hot since getting called up to Triple A. He's hitting 300 and 862 OPS, six homers. That is smoked. And Jason Shreve might have gotten nicked by that. Reeve immediately sent back Steve Donahue and Joe Girardi, who were ready to dash out to the mound. That ball came screaming by the shoulder of Shreve. And made contact, too. So uh, Shreve, a tough kid out there, waves them off. Where exactly did that hit them? Hit him? Uh, if I were the trainers, I'd be getting out there just to make sure, because that looks like the pitching arm. So even though the pitcher's, you know, going to play tough guy out there, I certainly did. I would go out there and check him, because that's right off of your pitching shoulder. So I'm a little surprised. And you know what, David? Looking at the replay, that was a little bit more of a direct blow than it seemed from the naked eye. And we'll see if it has any effect on Shreve. I tried to do that when I was uh, with the Mets. Young in my career, took a line drive off of off of my uh, pitching arm. Off my, I tried to wave Davey Johnson, who was the manager back, and he came out and he said, you don't wave me off. I'm going to come out here and check on you to make sure. That's my job. Shreve seems fine on that delivery as Nick Goody warms. Speed delivery from Shreve. Get another look here. You see the spin, the corkscrew spin, and the line drive right back in his left shoulder, right off of the top of his left shoulder. So scary. Here's the one, two. He got him. A nice inning from Chase and Shreve, who took a bullet in the shoulder. And was able to strike out Santana onto the eighth.
really came as advertised. He's been on a roll. That split change had the Yankees out in front all night long, and then coupled with a 95 mile an hour fastball, he's really been tough on these Yankees. Even though the Yankees have been slumping offensively, this is a hard matchup to break out of. And Sabathia really hung in there, stayed away from the big inning, nine hits, two walks, had 11 base runners in six innings. That's pretty tough. Only ended up giving up two runs and kept the Yankees right in this game. On the Hyundai scoreboard, the Indians a 2-1 lead, and Salazar still out there in the eighth. As the Yankees will send 9-1-2 to the plate, and Stephen Drew, who has fanned twice against Salazar. Still retaining his velocity very well, hasn't reached 100 pitches, so why not let Salazar, in a one-run game, control his own destiny, at least to the ninth inning. The Blue Jays with a 10-3 eighth inning lead on the A's. Grounded up the middle, but that's easy for Lindor. One down. Toronto just a half game in back of the Yankees right now in the AL East. And if these results held for the first time in 40 days, the Yankees would no longer be in possession of the division lead. Yes, that is in jeopardy right now as it stands. And if that does play out, that would be the first time the Blue Jays have led the National League or the American League East this late in the season since 1993. So that tells you a little bit about the excitement up there and the hunger. Are you talking about Joe Carter's pull swing like Stephen Drew's? They haven't been in the playoffs since Joe Carter was there. 93, yes. July 1st, the last time the Yankees have not been in first. They still have five outs to do something about that. Gardner has shown signs his last two at bats. A hard hit ball to center that was caught and then a single. Cody Allen warming. That shows you that Francona, any trouble here is going to go to his closer in the eighth. Not afraid. Gardner once again in a good count right here, three and one. Chance to get back on base. Salazar pretty much cruised other than the McCann home run until this, until the last inning when he pitched out of that jam, got Gregorius to pop up. Big swing from Gardner, fouled straight back. Dylan Batances joining Nick Goody. You would think. Score holds 2 1. Goody comes in. Yankees take the lead or tie this game. Batances comes in. The payoff. Spoiled by Gardner. 96 miles an hour still, David. And no surprise from Salazar, who has the fifth highest average fastball velocity in all of baseball. And has had a very nice strike to ball ratio tonight. Been in complete control for the most part. And then when he did get in the jam, he made, made the pitches to get out. Now that time, Gardner walks. Take a look at tomorrow's starting pitchers brought to you by Verizon Files, the fastest, most reliable internet. Nathan Avaldi, who has been red hot, 11 and 2 with an ERA that continues to drop against Trevor Bauer, 9 and 8 of 406. Coverage begins at 630 on yes, and the game at 7 on picks 11. Salazar will at least face Headley, who fouls that straight back. Yankees tried to hit and run with Headley. And Gardner on in the sixth, and Headley swung through a pitch, and Gardner was thrown out easily. And as Headley came back to the dugout, you could see our cameras catching Joe Girardi saying, My bad to Headley. He just 
picked the wrong pitch. So, you know, the Headley got a pitch he could not handle was way up and out of the strike zone, a really high fastball. Salazar tough to hit. Headley ahead two and one. See Salazar trying to regroup. This is when the manager really starts to pace in the dugout. Choose to stay with this guy and now all of a sudden. Falling behind good hitters count here for for Headley to be able to jump him. The two one. Way up. And it's now three and one an even better hitters count and there is the pacing of Terry Francona right on cue. Salazar regularly above the century mark. The three one. Swung on it, foul back, and that one might have been out of the zone. Yeah, I mean Salazar got it on the inside corner. Headley with the right idea, trying to trying to cheat and start a swing a little early. Salazar pulls it in on the inside corner. It was meant to be away. For the Yankees send Gardner. One out. 3 2 count. There goes Gardner. The pitch is high. Ball four, and the Yankees are set up after back to back one out walks. And now Terry Francona will turn his pace into a walk to the mound. The closer, Cody Allen, will come on. Alex Rodriguez will be up. 2 1 game. By People's United Bank N.A., the way you bank, but way better. And by your Tri Honda dealers. Hurry to your local Tri Honda dealer for great deals on the 2015 models. Well, Cody Allen comes on here in Cleveland to try and preserve a 2-1 Indians lead. The Yankees threatening with runners on first and second and one out. And Alex Rodriguez coming to the plate. See the numbers on Allen. Through a scoreless inning last night. To send his ERA back under four. But he has struggled a bit of late. An ERA of 788 over his last 10 appearances. And Danny Salazar's night is done. His line is active. As he's responsible for the two base runners. Gardner and Headley.
Big spot here. Rodriguez is hit into a double play. Flown out and struck out. The only Yankee run came on a Brian McCann solo homer. All the way back in the second. Yeah, we noted there Salazar's five walks really opened the door for this situation. the outside corner one and one good take there from Alex that's not the pitch you want to be swinging at in this situation Gardner leading off second and Headley on first after back to back walks Allen taking a long time as Rodriguez waits The one one strike two. Fastball right towards the inside corner. Good pitch. Rodriguez 0 for 1 in his career against Allen. Again, a long wait. The one two. And Rodriguez goes down on the back knee after staying alive. Got a little cat and mouse game going here with the catcher, you know, with Brett Gardner on second base right before that pitch. You see the catcher pound his glove on the ground as if a breaking ball was coming just to test to see if Gardner was stealing signs at second. Allen ended up throwing a fastball, so. The, Certainly the little cat and mouse games that go on in these situations and Gardner's a veteran Alex is a veteran Just testing to see if Gardner's key holding those signs and relaying to Alex what pitch is coming Right here. They're going no signs The one two and Rodriguez is able to hang tough and foul it back We've seen John Ryan Murphy do that on occasion when he catches just to see and that's a hanging slider right there. Good pitch to hit and Alex was just a little fooled on it out in front. You can see this pitch coming right at you boy. That's a hanger right there and Alex just pulled off of it. See the reaction from the pitcher Allen. He knew he made a mistake. Runners lead. The one two grounded hard could be two six four. Three inning over. Cody Allen comes on and does the job, and Rodriguez leaves the run.
opportunity. Alex ahead, 1 0. Fastball inside gets it to two strikes. Another good pitch to hit right here. Boy, a hanging slider and a fastball right down the middle as Alex rolls over it into a double play. So, Allen, very fortunate right there as Rodriguez had a hanging slider and a fastball. They got a lot of the plate. And for the second inning in a row, the Yankees missed opportunities, leaving runners on base. And Nick Goody will come on to try and keep this a 2 1 deficit. And give the Yankees a chance in the top of the ninth inning. You see Goody two appearances at the major league level this year. On the Hyundai scoreboard, Indians with a 2 1 lead. Yankees lone run, a solo homer by Brian McCann back in the second. Jerry Sands one for three. Goody with good numbers in the minors this year. First at double A Trenton, a 173 ERA in 29 appearances. Then at Scranton, pitching to a 164 ERA in eight appearances. And combined has allowed just 39 hits in 52 and two third innings. Well, one of the benefits of the the shuttle. This year in the Yankees bullpen, as you've been able to see a lot of young arms make their debuts and find out. Catches the outside corner. It's really a game today of not only roster construction early in the season, but then how you maneuver on the, the roster movement. Getting guys on the roster, the 40 man roster, the 25 man roster. Not the easiest thing to do. Brian Cashman and the Yankees have taken full advantage of the 40 man this season. It's a very active waiver wire all year, especially this time of year, meaning when a guy like Chris Capuano or Garrett Jones gets DFA'd or taken off the roster and released, any other team can pick him up. So you can expose guys. As Goody gets the call on a high slider right there. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we've selected the data strong fan photo of the game. Tweak your strongest fan photo to the hashtag yes data strong fan. And you just might see yourself in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by T-Mobile. <laughs> That's clever. The combo shirt. A rock. Not exactly the Anski brothers from the 90s, but. <laughs> same idea. Now was it the Anski commercial? No. What was, it was the Duque commercial where you did the Coney dance. Thing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. The El Duque. Yeah. Luis Soho, I believe, asking you. He stole the show. Yes. Soho was the star. Coney, don't you have a dance? Why don't you have a dance? There it is. <laughs> Took 20 takes for Luis to do that line. Did he really? And he nailed it. Line drive in the box score. Goody ahead 0 and 2. Looking ahead to the top of the ninth, the Yankees will have Teixeira, McCann, and Beltron. Arguably the guys who have given the Yankees their best swings tonight. It's kind of been a similar story over the last week. We talked about how things can change so dramatically in a week. Toronto's ascension poised to take over the American League East division lead right now. Yankees good pitching. All the clamoring at the trade deadline was to get more pitching. The pitching's fine once again tonight. Two runs. Missed opportunities the last two innings from the Yankees offense is really. Down the right field line had his foul. It's really disappointing, you know, when you're on the bench, when you do get opportunities like that late in the game. Back to back innings. Runners in scoring position on third base, less than two outs, and 
can't come through, can't quite push it through. That's when you really get frustrated, missed opportunities. And we mentioned the number before, but during this six-game span where the Yankees have gone one and five entering tonight, they've pitched to a 2-3-5 ERA. And have allowed just two runs tonight. Count full now on Urshela. Payoff. Ellsbury up and moving around. If needed, possibly in the ninth. Could be a pinch running possibility. If not a pinch hitting possibility for maybe Chris Young. Who would be facing the righty Allen as Urshela walks. Here's Abraham Almonte. Looking at strike one. It is final. In Toronto, the Blue Jays have now won 10 in a row. 10-3 the final over the A's. And with that win, at this moment, the Blue Jays and Yankees are tied atop the AL East. Joe Girardi's team will either vault themselves back in front by a half game or be a half game behind, depending on the way the rest of this one goes. Good delivery from Goody. Excellent breaking ball. You see, Chris Capuano is back. We've seen a couple of guys like that this year. You just, you, you never know. You, you get released. A lot of times the best decision for guys like that is to stay with the organization, accept the assignment, and you get called right back. And that's, that's the case with Capuano. The 0-2. Roll foul. You see, a, see it a lot with guys that get released or DFA'd and they have a decision to make. They can go somewhere else to kind of test the waters or they can stay with this organization because it's a numbers game. And a lot of times you see those guys recirculate if they choose to stay with the organization. Sometimes that definitely is the best move. I'm not sure what Garrett, Garrett Jones is going to do at this point. It sounded today like he likely would try and find an opportunity elsewhere because this has happened a second time. He came back up, didn't end up with any at-bats. He was very professional and kind about it all, though, saying it was understandable that he didn't get any at-bats. And he is very much liked in that clubhouse. Very popular. Brian McCann will chat with the rookie hurler. Curious time for a visit. A little schooling going on there on an 0-2 count. McCann going out to make sure he, he understands what good he wants to do here, what is his best finish pitch, how to go about finishing off a guy here. The 0-2. 
That's the old school way. Set it up. Finish pitches are, have to be set up. Fastball in first, push them off. And then you can go to your off speed, that curveball down in the dirt. Try to back door. Urshela is on first after the walk. One out in a 2 1 game. Slowly to third. Headley has one play. It's at first, and he makes it. On to second goes Urshela. Roberto Perez, a walk, a single, and has scored a run. Important batter here, David. You want to hold this game right here. Absolutely. As Headley really had no chance that time to cut down the lead runner. Had to take the obvious out. Good, he gets a good test right here. The breaking ball for strike one. The Indians two for 12 with runners in scoring position tonight. Plenty of opportunities. The Yankees, meanwhile, 0 for 3. Those chances have come over the last two frames. I don't know that I've ever seen any pitcher wear the number 74. It's like a spring training number, right? It is. Grounded hard, tough hop. Headley hangs with it nicely to end the inning. Beautiful stick to itiveness from Headley. And the Yankees will send up Mark Teixeira, Brian McCann, and Carlos Beltran to try and tie this game down one. Join Yes for pregame coverage starting at 6.30. Then after the game on Picks 11, come back for Yankees extra innings. And Friday, Yes has complete coverage as the Bombers open a series with the division rival Blue Jays. The pregame starts at 6.30 right here on Yes. Top of the ninth inning. The Yankees trailing the Indians 2-1 with the Blue Jays already having one tonight to put themselves in a first place tie with the Yankees. And after Cody Allen got Alex Rodriguez to bang into an inning ending double play with runners on first and second in the eighth, he will face Teixeira, McCann, and Beltran. And deliver strike one. Teixeira, line to third. 
in his second at bat and then single. Maybe showing some signs. And that's not going to help build the case. Well, Allen's got a really good breaking ball, and you can see Teixeira, no doubt, could not hold up. The 0 2. Just missed. Teixeira has had some good swings uh, last night and tonight. His rocket to first base really derailed a potential rally last night on a double play ball. Tonight again to shortstop. Strike three to Teixeira down looking. Really good pitch from Allen. Just drops off the table, backing up a little bit, and gets the call in the outside corner. See Teixeira. No doubt. Just walks back to the dugout. Here is Brian McCann, who has accounted for the only Yankees run. A solo homer back in the second inning. Another weak wave at that nasty off speed you're talking about, David. Yeah, he's got a good one tonight. You don't see Teixeira McCann take those kind of swings very often. Really, the Indians collectively have a great group of arms. Power arms up and down through the bullpen and the rotation. One of the best pitching staffs around. They really do. Depth wise, we've saw in the 16 inning game last night, we saw power pitcher after power pitcher, and we haven't even seen one of the best in the game, Corey Kluber, in the series. The Yankees thought that was going to be a break. Yeah. Usually it is. Well, David, you called it a trap series because of their arms, and we've seen that thus far. As McCann swings and misses, he's going to try and stumble his way to first to throw down. Hits McCann. He is safe. Took a moment for McCann to realize. And then finally, after slipping, made his way to first. Now Terry Francona is going to argue that McCann was out of the baseline, but we'll take a look, David. Yeah, we'll take a look. Very unusual play is. I don't think you can call that one. No. He's actually one foot in the. He actually is in the box and one foot on the line, so should be no argument there at all. Nice try, Tito, but it ain't going to work. Where is McCann supposed to go? And McCann will be pinch run for. By John Ryan Murphy. It's one of those obscure old rules in baseball that where a guy could strike out and still get on first base. Catcher's got to catch it unless the base is occupied. Here is Beltron as the go ahead run. Beltron has doubled and walked homered yesterday. One of the few swinging the bat well. Very well. And certainly a threat right here. As Beltron homered in last night's game to tie it up at 2-2. Two to two. And there is something, a hat of sorts, on the warning track and left. Now, David, Jacoby Ellsbury, Brendan Ryan, potential pinch running options. But Joe Girardi going with John Ryan Murphy. Short bench, trying, I suppose, not to kill two players with one move. Yeah, it is interesting. We're going to have to ask Girardi after the game. I mean, that's the thing about the managers. They're privy to all the information. So he has his reasons. And Beltron has an 0-2 count.
But it would seem to me that in this situation, yeah, I mean, you would want the legs on first base, a double he could potentially score here. So, yeah, a little curious on that move. Here's the 0-2. Beltron stays alive. With that being said, a potential double scoring to run on first. The Cleveland outfield clearly playing no doubles defense, very deep. Murphy leads off first. The 0 2. And Beltron staying alive. So it's a question you, uh, you're going to have to ask Joe Girardi in the post game. I'll be interested to see. He's had two opportunities to use El Ellsbury. One to pinch hit for Young. And the other to pinch run here with a man on first. Matt at bat with Young was with second and third. And two outs in the seventh against the righty Salazar. The 0-2. Line drive left field. That'll hang up. For a viewist to make the catch and Murphy retreats. Well, another good swing for Beltron. The Yankees with just nine runs over these past seven games including tonight and hoping that Didi Gregorius can come up with a big two out hit Jacoby Ellsbury has replaced Chris Young in the on deck circle so there's your answer for why not using Ellsbury to pinch run. There's Ellsbury getting ready. After a day off to work on some things. Among other reasons. According to Joe Girardi, thought he was struggling. Might as well give him a day. Let him work on some video. Give him a mental break, but that's over. Hopefully for the Yankees' sake. Big hack and a miss from Gregorius, who's trying to give Ellsbury a chance. Cody Allen has had the curve working thus far. The 1 1. Swing and a miss. The 1 and 2. And the Yankees are down to their final strike. A strike away from watching the Blue Jays. Take a first place lead in the AL East. Strike three ball game. Indians win it 2 1, the final in Cleveland. And for the first time since July 1st, the Yankees are no longer in first place in the AL East. Cody Allen strikes out the side. And the Indians locked down a 2-1 win. We'll come back and wrap things up.